Okay, game development is very confusing at the beginning stages. There is a lot of paths, pipelines and disciplines that beginners have to choose from. In order to get from planning to a complete game or at least a concept and also choosing the right software to learn is in itself a very confusing task for somebody that has little to no knowledge. And the idea to pay for programs with very high prices or subscriptions is not very appealing. So the idea of choosing a free software is not only logical, but feels right, as those inexperienced developers are not really sure if this is what they want to do in their lives. We are going to look at free alternatives for 3D production, sound, image manipulation, game engines, texturing, and if you're making any sort of showcase, you need a video editing software. So with that out of the way, let's begin. For 3D production, we got the most popular program in the game development pipeline. Blender is undoubtedly the way to introduce 3D to somebody that is trying to get into this craft. If you're like me and you wanna do some freelance work, then you are probably being interested in Blender. It is a 3D creation suit that allows you to make models and animate with ease. It also comes with a lot of powerful features that are not found in paying counterparts like Cinema 4D or Maya, like the game engine and the node-based material editor. It is also very customizable and open source, which means that you can change anything you want to fit in your workflow. Even though Maya has been the industry standard for years at this point, Blender is rapidly catching up to it getting involved in more and more mainstream projects in both games and movies, and even winning awards at festivals like the Seagraft. The only downside to Blender is that it has a very steep learning curve and can be hard to understand if you are just starting out in this 3D environment. However, it is also compensated by the huge community and support, so every concept or skill can be found as tutorial or as a course in the internet. So it is definitely a must have if you are into 3D and you wanna get started. Now moving on to sound. This one is one of the oldest pieces of software that are still out there. If you are recording sounds, voiceovers for characters, or simply modify any sound for a specific purpose, then Audacity is the way to go. It has such a wide variety of functions ranging from audio files, to filters and effects for any type of sound. But the one thing that is really great about Audacity is the number of plugins that it has as well. There are literally hundreds if not thousands of different plugins available for Audacity that can be downloaded for free. Also, Audacity's UI is very intuitive and easy to use. It hasn't changed much since its creation, so it feels very familiar. Definitely a must-have if you want to work on your sound design inside your games. Another great thing about this software is that it is free and open source, so basically anyone can look at the code and modify it as they see please. Which is something very important in game development, as they can create any tool for sound modifications for their projects. Now, the ability to modify any picture as you see fit is a very important skill to have in game development, as one of the areas where many studios spend a lot of resources is in texturing and shading. Here is where images are projected to 3D objects, but also effects such as reflection, roughness, normal maps, ambient occlusions are all merged into an asset. So in order to make them, many pictures have to be modified. We all know Photoshop is at the top, uh, but it's also very pricey. The free alternative, however, is GIMP. This software is very versatile and can do pretty much anything Photoshop does and more. Removing backgrounds, enhance pictures, highlight details, put filters, create art, make thumbnails, well, it can do it all. As Blender, the only downside is its difficulty, but given the great tool that it is, it is worth to learn, as these kind of skills are not only valuable in game development, but also in many others, so you better consider to have it in your library if you haven't. 
We have been talking about game engines before in this channel. If you haven't seen my video on how to get started in game development, I will leave a link in the description and also in the corner right here. Game engines are where everything comes together to make a game. Choosing your own engine is probably the most important step as there are engines that work better for 3D games, others in 2D or pixel art, and finally there are the ones that seems to fit every style but nothing in specific. Having said that, most of these engines are free, however, you need to consider that when you launch your game and you have a certain amount of sales, some engines start taking a percentage of your earnings, so you better check that out before you choose. Unreal Engine, Unity and Godot are the most recognizable, so if your game idea is 2D, then you probably wanna go with Unity. If you are not a programmer, then Godot is the easiest to use, although it depends on the type of game you want to make. And if your game idea is 3D first person shooter or a third person game, then Unreal Engine is your best option. Nowadays pretty much all engines have a note based coding. It makes the process of coding more understandable, although it is recommended that you learn traditional coding. This is an ideal way to get started and make sense of the concepts so you cannot go wrong with any of these options. Lastly, texturing and shading. In this area there are many possibilities. Let's start with my favorite, Quixel Mixer. It is a powerful tool to quickly and procedurally texture your 3D models with the help of all the assets of Megascans, many smart materials, and a lot of controls over the end product, so you can achieve stunning results in minutes. All you need is an account with Epic Games and you are good to go. Your models should be used in conjunction with Unreal Engine, but you can always import them into other softwares. For shading, Blender once again appears in here. At the shading tab you can manipulate the materials in a node-based structure, making it very easy to use. Even though this is not the best option, it is good to have it in the same software as your 3D modeling tool. Another one is Materialize. With this program you can generate all the material maps from one picture, making the process almost trivial. You can expect a great result with minimal input. And what's more is that it is very light on your PC, making it a must into every developer library. And as a bonus, there are a great number of websites offering textures for free, which is very likely what you want in the end. Among the options we got Ambient CG. There are thousands of options to choose from. Next is Poly Heaven. Again, a very comprehensive options with the HDRIs and more. And finally, Texture Can. All of these websites are a great way to bring some of your 3D models to life as the great majority of them can be downloaded in up to 4K, sometimes even bigger. All of this software can help you in your journey to make your dream game a reality. So now tell me, how many of these pieces of software you knew? Do you use them all in your pipeline? Tell me which other free programs are you using right now, because it will help other people if you do. For now, this was David and remember that hitting the like and subscribe button is the right click to do. Have a good one.